Welcome back everybody to the Cowboy Slot Channel where we bring you experienced advice from years of working in the casinos, tips, reviews, and so much more. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell to stay notified for when we come out with future videos. In today's video, we're going to be covering the most important part of any casino visit, and that of course is your budget. How much money should you bring with you into the casino? Which denominations are best for your bankroll? And also, how do you handle those jackpots? What can you do to help extend your bankroll and preserve your earnings? And what resources do you have if you or somebody that you know is struggling with a gambling problem? You'll find out in today's video. So let's start off with how much money you should bring with you to the casino. Especially with the growing popularity of a lot of YouTube channels out there, it's very easy for a person to get caught up in watching all of these big massive wins or people playing these massive amounts. But the most important part is you need to make sure that you're sticking with an amount that you are comfortable with. How much money you bring with you to the casino is ultimately up to you, the player. But depending on what type of machines that you're trying to play or trying to go for, that can kind of impact the amount that you bring with you. One thing that you really do need to keep in your mind is that gambling is intended for entertainment purposes only. And no matter what tips that you apply, you always have the chance to lose whatever you bring with you to the casino. The amount that you bring with you is also going to determine the denomination of machines that you're going to be playing at the casino. So if you are intending on playing those higher denomination, high limit slots, you wanna make sure to have the significant bankroll with you when you go to the casino to make it a successful trip. If you would like to play those higher denomination machines but you don't yet have the bankroll to do so, that's perfectly okay. Start with the lower limit machines and work your way up as you win. If you are working with a smaller bankroll and you're starting with those lower denominations and you're working your way up the denomination ladder, Believe it or not, that's actually how a lot of high limit slot players got their first start into building up to being able to play those higher limit machines. Losing more than your budget or more than you intended to spend can be an awful feeling and devastating to many. So how do you prevent that from happening? Here's Mark to give us some helpful tips. All right, now that you have a budget and you've decided how much you're gonna to bring to the casino, one of the most important things that you need to do to follow up with that budget is to leave all accesses to cash at home. Leave your debit cards, credit cards, checks, whatever. Leave those at home. Listen, the casino will basically cash anything that you give to it that's valid. So they'll, they'll charge you crazy fees for credit card advances and all kinds of stuff like that. And so the best way to protect yourself is to leave all of that outside of your reach. Leave it at home. If you do need to go travel and you're, you know, need to have some kind of backup sources to cash, bring a credit card, but call your credit card company in advance and tell them, look, do not allow me to do cash advances on this card. If they say, no, we can't do that, have your wife or spouse or somebody else set a pin code that you do not know so that you, you do not have access to get a cash advance from that credit card. This may seem like a crazy, you know, crazy links to go to, but Believe me, sometimes you get really caught up in the moment and you think, wow, I could probably get another thousand dollars out of this credit card if I go to the cashier's cage. They will do it and they won't tell you not to do it or anything like that. So you got to be very careful. So leave all that stuff at home and you'll be better prepared with your budget and you won't have to worry so much about losing even more cash while you're in the casino. So you have your budget set aside and you have that extra safety net of making sure that your cash at home is secure and you finally get to the casino. What denomination should you play? As we have discussed in several previous videos, two major factors. The first being the higher denomination, the better the odds are going to be. So you want to play the highest denomination that your budget allows for. The other thing we've discussed is that your bet amount or the denomination of the machine should be no greater than 1% of your total overall bankroll. An example for this is if you brought $500 with you to the casino, you should try to stick with a $5 machine or if you are playing lesser amounts, no more than a $5 bet. By incorporating this general 1% rule into practice, when you walk into a casino, you're going to be able to narrow down your search of exactly what slot machines you're looking for. So for example, if you go in with $500 and you know for a fact you're gonna be looking for $5 machines, you can then go hunt and pick out those $5 machines and then apply the other tips 
to locating which of those machines would be the most ideal one to play. And remember, it's quite all right if you're working with a lower budget. You can always build your way up later on down the line. You do always want to be mindful and cautious of those penny machines, especially if you're working with a lower budget. Many times the bet amounts on these machines can be really high and actually exceed that 1% rule. So just remember guys, stick with the 1% rule for that nice little cushion there to try to help guide you on what denomination of machines to play and the bet amounts that you should be playing. All right, so let's say that you had your first hand pay or you've got a big bankroll now because you've got some nice line hits on those slot machines. How do you leave with that money? Well, it sounds easy, but believe me, it's not. You get really caught up in the moment and you just start spending more and more money. So one of the best things that you can do is call a cash safe and we're going to put a link up in the description below. Uh, full disclosure is an affiliate link, but we really stand behind these products because they are very, very useful for taking some of those winnings back home with you. So how it works is it's basically a little cash box and they have small ones that are pocket sized and then they have bigger ones that you can put in your luggage. But essentially the way it works is that it's a lock box that you keep the key at home. You do not bring it with you to the casino or on your trip or anything. And they have little slots in it so you can fold your cash up and stick it in the slot and when you get home you get to open it up and see your winnings. These things are very valuable for you in the casino. Um, you know, every time you get a big win, shuffle some money off in there, and when you get back, you get to open it up, and you'll be really surprised at how much money you actually left with the casino. So these things are very valuable. I would highly recommend everyone to get one, especially if you have trouble, like, keeping on to the cash. You know, a lot of people think it's very easy. You know, I'll just put it in my left pocket, and that means it's not there. <laughs> Guys, when you're in the casino, you're going to lose your mind sometimes and you're going to start reaching for that left back pocket. So get the cash safe, slide your bills in, and know that you can't open it until you get back home. Ideas like those locking cash boxes are a great thing to have. And it's perfect for when you hit a jackpot, which is exactly what we're going to talk about now. Hitting a jackpot is a thrilling experience, whether it's your first jackpot or one of many over the course of your life. But did you know that you actually do have some options when you hit that jackpot to help with your bankroll? Casino policy is widely different when it comes to handling jackpots, and most of these options are available to you. However, you do have to ask specifically for them prior to them paying you out. Typically, all jackpots are paid out in cash. However, the options that are available to you, the player that you might not realize, are things like you can request a check, you can request a voucher, or you can request a mix of a check and cash. A good idea to help manage your bankroll is if you do hit a jackpot, take it in the form of a check. That way, there's no cash in your hand and you're less likely to spend it again there at the casino. Taking the jackpot in the form of a check is one of the best money management things that you can possibly do. And it's also more secure because then you're not carrying around a large amount of cash with you in the casino or in the parking lot on your way home. The biggest thing that gamblers oftentimes struggle with is once they hit a jackpot, they have that urge to put it back in the machine or to continue to play. There have actually been many sad stories of people winning massive amounts of jackpots, some that are over half a million dollars, and they actually leave the casino with no money at all. And that can be a pretty bad sign. Here's Mark to tell us all about it. All right, so you're having a good time in the casino. Maybe you're winning some money, maybe you're losing some money, but you need to realize when you have a gambling problem or a gambling addiction. Now, this is something that people don't really like to talk about, but again, it's very important because we don't want you to fall into this trap. It's very easy to do. It's like any other addiction, you know, drugs, alcohol, etc. And we want to be able to protect you guys from this kind of stuff. So how do you know that you're having a gambling addiction? If you find yourself constantly chasing wins or you're raising your bets way past your budget or you're trying to get accesses to cash that are a little unreasonable like draining your trust fund or retirement or you're going to the pawn shop and selling laptops and all kinds of stuff just to be able to bet one or two more times. If you ever find yourself in that situation, you have a gambling problem and a gambling addiction. There are a lot of resources available. Brantley's going to talk to you about all those. But the first step is identifying that you do have a problem or where you notice one of your friends or family members has a problem. That is step number one is identifying that you have the problem and then taking those next steps. 
Problem gambling can be a very serious thing. It can affect not just the player, but your family and everybody else around you. If you or somebody that you know is struggling with a gambling issue, we do have many resources available to help you out. The first thing that you should know is casinos by law are required to have information available to you, the player, about problem gambling. They are required to keep this information on site and they are required to provide it to you the minute you ask for assistance. All casino gaming employees are trained to deal with this specific kind of issue. If you or somebody that you know is struggling with a gambling addiction and you are in the casino facility, you can ask any gaming employee and they must provide the information for you and provide you with resources about problem gambling in your area. Here on this channel, we take problem gambling very seriously as well, which is why we offer resources available on our website at www.ropethejackpot.com. This is a 24-7 national help hotline that you can call anytime and it's 100% totally confidential and always free. To avoid spending too much money and getting yourself into any kind of gambling trouble, you want to make sure to have your bankroll last as long as possible. Here's Mark to tell us how to make your bankroll last the longest. All right, so we've talked a lot on this channel about what machines to play to extend your bankroll, right? So we talk about low volatility machines, things like that. But there's actually a little bit more to that than just picking the right machines. Extending your bankroll works together with your budget. So you should take your budget. If you're there for, let's say, a casino and you're there for two or three days, separate it out every day so you have a certain amount. Let's say you're bringing $1,000 to Las Vegas and you're going to be there for four days. We'll separate that out to a little over $200 a day. And that way that you know that every day you are only spending that set amount and then you're going to do something else. It's very easy to go into a casino, especially if you're on a trip to Las Vegas or something, and blow it all within the first hour that you're there. That is not extending your bankroll. That is destroying your bankroll. We do not want that to happen. So set your budget, do your daily allotment, and sit down and play those machines that are good for you. We always recommend playing those low volatility, low volatility machines first. And then if you're doing well and you're climbing that ladder like Brantley talked about and you're starting to bet higher, then you can talk about you know, spending your money on some of the other machines, say a higher volatility, riskier machine, or even bumping up your denominations a little bit. But do not do that on day number one. Day number one is about establishing kind of a baseline. You start with your minimum amount uh, of your budget for that day, and if you win, great. If you don't, it's okay. The next day you start over with your $200 bankroll and go from there. And so extending your bankroll is very important, especially if you're gonna be in a casino for multiple days. Uh, you don't want to blow it the first night, believe me. You're going to be miserable when all your friends say, let's go down to the casino and play some slots, and you're like, I have no money left. <laughs> what am I going to do, stay in my room? So just, just keep that in mind. You know, Make your money last, and you'll have a much more enjoyable time. All right, guys, so let's summarize all of this and bring it all together for you. So basically, money management is not something people really want to talk about. It's kind of the elephant in the room. Like, why can't you just tell me which machine to play and which one's gonna give you the jackpot? <laughs> Believe me, we wish we could. We can give you tips to kind of better your chances, but we, nothing is a guarantee. It's still gambling, right? So what is really important is the money management aspect side of it. And that is your responsibility. That is not the casino's responsibility. They're in there to get your money. They want you to come in, spend your money gambling. You do have a chance of winning, but more often than not, you don't. So what we try to do is put this video together so that you have all of the information you need to setting your budget, realizing when you have a problem, you know, planning your stay so that you only have a certain amount every day to play so that you can really extend that bankroll. And then also just realizing that there are a lot of resources out there if you feel like you have entered into the realm of a problem gambler. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. It happens to a lot of people. There's a lot of free anonymous resources out there that Brantley talked about. Take advantage of these things because they will turn you around. So anyway, guys, we don't want to have a negative video here, but money management is super important. It's something that we need to get across to you guys. We give a lot of tips and tricks on how to better your play here, and money management is just one more thing to add to that pile. All right, guys, I hope you appreciated this video. Give us a thumbs up if you uh, don't mind, and also a subscription because we do this stuff all the time. And Brantley, I really appreciate your help on this video, and we'll see you on the next one.